Hey there, Sam. Let's learn to build the API routes in our app. Laravel let us to define all of our app routes inside a routes folder. As you can see, there are already four files in it, API, channels, console, and web. The API file is where we put in our API routes. Channels is where we put in our WebSocket channels, which is something that we'll eventually touch on in this series. If you're not familiar with WebSockets, it is essentially the technology that powers real-time communication. For example, real-time messaging, or real-time notification. The console file is where we define simple artisan commands. And lastly, web is where we can put in routes that leads to a web page. So here you can see that when we send a GET request to the root page, Laravel will run this function, which returns the welcome view. The view function is a helper function provided by Laravel that references the view folder inside the resources folder. It simply loads the welcome blade file and send it back as a response of the HTTP request. And this welcome file is the default Laravel landing page that we see on the fresh installation of Laravel. If you haven't heard of Blade before, it is a native templating engine provided by Laravel for us to do cool stuff in HTML. For example, easily injecting PHP code inside our HTML or write an if statement to conditionally render part of our web page. Anyway, Laravel Blade is another major component in the framework and it deserves its own video series. For now, let's go back to writing our routes. We define our HTTP routes primarily in API and web.php. As we mentioned earlier, we put routes that returns a view as web routes, and any other operation that returns JSON response will put them inside api.php. The main difference between these two types of routes is the middleware that the request has to go through before the request hits the router. So if we go to our HTTP kernel, in the middleware groups protected property, the middleware in the web group are applied to all requests that we define as web routes. And the same happens to the API group. So all API routes will have these two middleware applied to them. Okay, now let's go back to api.php and we'll go through the basic of defining a route. When we're designing the API for an app, there are two popular choices or architecture in the modern world. One is called the REST architecture and two is GraphQL. I wouldn't recommend GraphQL for a simple app that we're building because it's very complicated to set up and get it to work properly. However, I have attached a few resources in the description if you're interested about GraphQL. For now, let's explore more about the REST architecture. By definition, REST is a set of principles and architectural constraints that aims to help us to build robust API. In a nutshell, a RESTful API would follow these six constraints. Uniform interface, client server, stateless, cacheable, layered system, and code on demand. If this sounds like wombo jumbo to you, don't worry. I'll show you my way of implementing a RESTful API. We know that HTTP requests have four common flavors, get, post, patch, or put, and delete. Get request is for reading data, post is for creating, patch and put is for updating, and delete is for delete. Together, they are normally known as CRUD operation, which is the acronym of create, read, update, and delete. Now with these four operations, we can pretty much do anything with the data on our app. And for every model, we should define the routes for each of these operations. And here's a standard convention on how to define these routes. Let's use the user model as an example. Let's start with get. Get means reading data or getting data from the database. Normally for an API, we have two variants for getting a resource. Getting a list of resources versus getting a specific resource. When we're defining the route to get a list of resources, it should be slash and the name a resource in plural form, which in our case here will be users. If we're getting a specific user, it will be slash users slash and a target user ID. It's simple, right? And now for post, it will be a post request to slash users. To update a user, it will be a patch request to slash users slash the target user ID. And to delete a user, Again, will be slash user and slash the target user ID. So notice that we're just alternating between slash users and slash users slash ID. By using this convention, we can write a very consistent and predictable API. For other models, we just need to change user into the other names. Okay, now let's define these routes in Laravel. Back inside api.php, we'll define the routes that we just discussed for users. So for the get route, we can use a route facade and call the get method. The first argument is the API URI, and the second argument is the function to be triggered when this API endpoint is being hit. In other words, the second argument 
is the controller of this route. Laravel will automatically prefix the word API before all the routes that are defined in this API PHP file. So to test this route, I'm just going to return a JSON response with some dummy body. And now let's start our server. I'll go to my terminal and type in PHP Addison serve. And then in the browser, I'll go to API slash users and we see our dummy JSON response. So far, so good. Now back in our code, if you look at the sample routes that Laravel has provided us by default, you can see that it has a request argument in the controller. Now Laravel allows us to inject any kind of dependency into the controller. As we mentioned before, this is powered by the auto dependency resolution feature provided by Laravel. When we type in any class in a controller's argument, Laravel will attempt to resolve the dependency from the service container. So here in a sample code, what Laravel is doing is simply resolving the request class from the service container. And the request object here represents the incoming HTTP request. We can obtain all sort of information from it, and it is needed by most of the API endpoints. Let's take a look at what's inside it. I'll inject it inside our user's controller and dump the object inside the function body. And back in the browser, we can see the object is showing and it contains all sorts of information about the request. We've got headers, cookies, the query parameter, the request method, and all different kinds of useful information. And if you ever need a request, you just need to inject it inside the controller. Isn't that neat? Okay, now let's go ahead and create a second endpoint, which is to get a specific user. And again, we're gonna call the get method from the route facade. And the URI will be slash users slash curly braces ID. Here, the curly braces syntax is how we define a dynamic URL parameter. So this ID placeholder here would represent whatever the user has put in right after the word users. So if the URI looks something like slash users slash ABC, then the router will still match this request. Now in the controller, it will now accept an ID argument, which would represent the ID parameter that we put inside the URI. A very important point to note here is that the argument name must be exactly the same as what we put in inside the curly braces. Otherwise, Laravel wouldn't be able to pass and load the URL parameter for us. Now in the function body, just for demonstration, I'll simply put the ID parameter in it. And let's go back to our browser to test our code. If I put in one after users, I get a JSON response where the data key is one. If I change it to two, I get two. And if I put in some random string, A, B, C, D, E, I get A, B, C, D, E as well. Now, can you see how everything is connected inside this function? Let's go through this one more time. We put in A, B, C, D, E as the URL parameter for which the router would take it as our ID placeholder here. Then Laravel will pass it and load it to our controller as the ID argument. And in the function body, we're simply returning the ID as part of the JSON, which is what we see inside our browser. So here the ID placeholder represents a user ID and Laravel makes it very simple for us to resolve the model instance. All we need to do is to type hint or inject the dependency in the function argument. So it'll look something like this. And now the ID argument would represent the user model record. And now back inside our browser, we'll change ABCDE to user1 and we get a user details. And now you might be wondering, this seems a little bit magical. How does this work? The answer to this lies inside the middleware code substitute binding provided by Laravel out of the box. So if we go back to our HTTP kernel class, inside the API middleware group, we can see a middleware called substitute bindings. And if we look inside it, go to the handle method, we can see some interesting code here. So this middleware is essentially calling two methods on the router, substitute bindings and substitute implicit bindings. And this is exactly how Laravel binds the user ID that we supply in the URL parameter into an actual model instance. There are actually two types of bindings, an explicit binding, which is taken care by the substitute binding method, and implicit binding, taken care by the substitute implicit binding method. And if we read the inline function documentation here, it says this function will substitute the implicit eloquent model binding. In other words, this function will read our URL and try to inject the relevant model record into our controller, which is what we have seen just now when we bind our user model in the controller. It is considered as an implicit binding because this binding is taken care by Laravel automatically. There's only one caveat for implicit binding, however, that is, as we mentioned before, the name of the placeholder and the name of the argument must match. So if I change my ID argument into some other different name, 
and go back to our browser, hit refresh, and we can no longer see our data. And now if I change my placeholder to have the same name as my argument, hit refresh again, and our data is back. And that is implicit route binding in Laravel. Now let's talk about explicit binding. In contrast to implicit binding, explicit route binding allow us to customize what gets resolved from the binding. To do that, we need to go to route service provider, which is living inside the providers folder in the app directory. And now scroll down to the boot method. And as you can see here, this is where Laravel configure the router. It's loading the API PHP file, applying the API prefix to all API routes, and apply the API group middleware. And the same happens with the web routes. Anyway, to define the explicit route binding, we will code the bind method from the route facade. The first argument is the placeholder name in our route. So if I put in user here, we are telling Laravel that we want to explicitly bind the user placeholder to our custom logic. And the second argument will be a callback function that accepts a value argument which represents whatever the user has applied to our user's placeholder. So if we look at our route just now in our browser, the value argument would be one in this case, because that's what we use for the user's placeholder. And here in the function body, whatever we return in this callback function will become whatever we resolve in the controller. So let's try to return some random data here. And back to our route, I'll remove the type hint, otherwise PHP will throw us an error. And now go back to the browser, hit refresh, and we see one, two, three, four, five, which is what we return in the explicit binding. I rarely use explicit binding when building an API server but the tool is there if you ever need it. All right, let's continue building our routes. The next one will be a post request to create a user. So we'll call the post method from the route facade and the rest is the same as before. We'll also define the patch request and the delete request. We will implement the actual logic for each route in a future video. For now, we'll just send back a dummy response for each of them. Once we've done that, let's test our endpoints here. I'll use Postman to test these API endpoints, but you're free to use any other HTTP clients. So to test our post endpoint, I'll change the method to post and specify the URL to be localhost 8000 API slash users. Click on send and it works. We'll do the same for patch and delete. And they're all working, which is great. It's a good place to stop here. However, there are much more to learn about routes and we'll continue in the next video. Key takeaway for this lesson, API routes are typically referred to routes that returns JSON and web routes are routes that returns HTML pages. We define API routes in the API PHP file. And for the web routes, we put it inside web.php. Laravel uses the substitute bindings middleware to automatically load model instance into our controller. And that makes our life much more easier. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.